Hello, everyone. It's been a wonderful time, and it's been quite some time since we met. And, and so I'm back today with another wonderful episode. And in this episode, I'll be teaching you how to um, apply a unidimensional function to, let's say, a spatial data set. And then by this, I mean applying the function at every point of the multidimensional data set. And so let's get straight into it to as much as possible to be as brief as possible today. All right, so we start off by importing the various packages. I'll still be using the PyMan candle, which in an earlier video, which I'll leave in the description link, I did, um, I, I used that function on just uh, point data. But now we'll be using that on the spatial data and we'll see how easy to make that also. So first we start off the importations or importing the functions that XRA packages, the NumPy and then the PyMan candle. And then our input file still remains the same file. So we use our XR.open data set to open the file. And because the data is a monthly data, I used line 15 in this case to convert it from a monthly into a yearly data, that's yearly means. And to be very easy, I just extracted a selected region. I extracted data from a particular region that's defined by, it is defined by the longitude and latitude given here. And that's predominantly over Africa. So that's it. Now to, perform the function or apply the function on the individual points of the spatial grid. Now, because each individual point is defined by its own position and these um, individual positions are actually increasing in defined steps. So all you need to do here is to, or what I personally do, which is quite easy to do is to apply a uh, loop. Okay, so I apply a loop and then pass the function into the loop. Uh, in this case, the loop is going to be over the longitude and latitude. So what we need to do first is to define a blank array. Let's call that our output. And we create that to a blank box. And from there, we now, okay, let's run the very first part. So we are in time and then uh, we can loop through so for i in uh, data that let then in that would also loop on the longitude so for g in data dot long Oh, we can print off the ing first to see what we are getting. Now, what happens mostly is when you have multiple for loops, it sort of slows the program a bit. But well, it depends on your memory capacity. And so what's more advised is um, but then the for loop is also a better alternative than the, you know, a normal while loop. Like while loop actually takes almost forever. And so this is a good alternative. All right. So now let me rerun the line 20 to 22 again so that we see what comes out. Okay. So gets to give us a very longitude and latitude information. Now, alternatively, um, in order not to show all these um, descriptions for the coordinates, we can actually perform the loop on only the values. Okay. So now if I run the same function this time on the values, I get, you know, just the values, all right. So now, 
So since we know how it works, we can ignore the print function. So what we are going to do now is to use our MK function, that's MK, and then we call the original test, which is in this case, the function we are using. And we are running that on our data, but then we select in this case, because it's in the loop, so it's going to select at that particular longitude and latitude. So data dot cell, and then we indicate longitude here equals to RJ, which is the longitude loop. And then also the latitude equals to uh, I. Now, bear in mind, whenever you run the MK that's original test, okay, so if you need the help on it, we can just do MK question mark and then MK dot original test. Okay, so in the end, we have information on the trend, the age, the P, a whole lot of things. Um, what we need now is just the slope as a simple um, approach. So we can just add a dot slope to bring only the slope aspect of the trend, the man can now train assessment. All right. Now, okay, let me run this and you would notice there's an error somewhere. Okay. Uh, okay, so this, this shouldn't just, it shouldn't be um, a string. So it should just be a normal um, assignment then. Okay. okay, so we have this error. And this will happen especially because my data hasn't got information on the um, ocean. It's just land temperature information. So now what we need to do is to apply a try function so that when it's on the land, it would give us a value. When it's on the ocean, we'll just default it to NAND. So what we need to do here is to now apply a try function above. So that means it tries to perform this function first. If it's successful, well, that's a good one. So if it's successful, let's assign the slope to slope var. but then all other exceptions, so except, so like all the errors we are seeing, the exceptions, so we, if it's not successful, then our slow value would just assign that to np dot none. that's like a missing value, okay? And then when we are done, in our four loops, we now append our slow value. to output, all right? So it means it will do that for both the latitude and longitude loops by append, finding the slopes and then appending it. So when we are done out here, we can now um, try output equals to mp.copy output. And then we now reshape we reshape the output because it's going to be a one dimensional appending that's done. So we need to reshape it into, you know, a, long, a longitude by latitude information. So, but bear in mind over here, when we just do data, the very top part tells us that the data is over the year, the latitude and the longitude. So I'm going to maintain this in order year, latitude, longitude. So it means my latitude will come before my longitude. So I'm gonna reshape in the order of the data dot latitude dot size by data dot longitude dot size. All right, so that is it. Okay, so once we are done with that part, what we need to do next is to 
change this um, multi-dimensional array of the function outputs into, we can change that into an X array, you know, data array to make it easier to work with. So what we do is to just use the X array dot data array. And we pass that on the output. And we now need to define the dimension. So that we are going to say that this has two dimensions and the dimensions here are the latitude and then the longitude. Bear in mind, we are still going with the same order as I indicated from here. All right, so latitude before longitude. And then we now create the coordinates. So the court in here. Now we use a dictionary type description here. So what we do is to define the, the latitude as the data dot lat. And then our longitude here is the data dot long. Right. And that's it. Uh, we can also decide to name the variable we are passing into the XRE um, data array. So we indicate here name equals to, let's call that slope. Okay. And that's it. We are done. So um, we can decide to pass this back into an into a net CDFR or let's call this one um, finally slopes. So we are assigning it to a variable slopes. And so when we have done our slopes has the dimension of longitude and latitude. So it's quite easy to just plot it. You can just do slopes dot plot. And we are done. So now we run, since I run the first part to make it easier, let me just run the second part. And then we see what the output is. And so that's it, there we have it. So this gives us for every individual grid, its own slope. So whatever function you are having, it means you can replace this part with your own function. And yes, uh, and try to also use the exception to deal with the um, missing aspect. And that's it. So that's one of the approaches. Um, a second alternative or one of the other ways of doing this is instead of passing or using the data dot cell in this case, and then looping through the individual longitude and latitude values, we can just create an np dot a range of the length of the data dot latitude. Um, bear in mind, I can ignore the dot values. And then we do same for np dot a range of the length of the data dot longitude. Similarly, I can ignore the dot values. And then what would happen is that in this case, instead of doing the data dot cell for this part and then bringing the longitude and latitude as the G and I, all we do is to just have a square bracket and then indicate that we need all the time. And then at I, which is the particular um, latitude and then also the longitude. Now in this case, um, we wouldn't need to you know, try to define or re um, sort of equate all the longitudes to the particular longitude or the latitude. What we are doing is to use their positional, um, just using their position. So we are doing a more positional selection here instead of using the data dot cell. So, and that is it. Both of them should work same way. So whichever one works for you, that's good. So now let's try to run this again, see what the output is. All right, and so there you have it. So whatever alternative you would want to use and whichever one you are, let's say, familiar with, you go ahead and then use that. All right, so now 
for instance, I would like to add a unit to the slope. What I need to do here before the plot is to define the slope's um, attribute of units. So I indicate here the slope's variable and then the attributes and then the unit. And I can just indicate the unit, which in this case, because it's in uh, its temperature, I can indicate degree Celsius per year, all right, as a string, and that's it. Now, we can also make use of um, LaTeX functionalities. That's by preceding this with an arrow. And then now what I want to do is to create a double dollar sign because I want a degree function. And so I raise the power O, that's to give us a superscript of degree. And then the C outside, so degree Celsius. Now per year, we are done. So if I just run this final part, that should give us that aspect. And that's it. And there you have your unit. Okay. And so that's basically how to apply a unidimensional function to a multidimensional data set. I believe you learned a lot from this wonderful episode. And if you did, just smash the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe for wonderful and more interesting videos that would come. And then, like I always say, there's always a bigger sphere of learning. And so go all out, be the best you can at go explore the potentials that you have. And it's amazing. Just see the, you know, huge slopes we are having, especially towards the eastern part of Africa and then also some part of, um, you have to hear, some part of the central to eastern Africa. There's a potential, you know, research area. And so, yeah, with your simple tool of visualizing, you get to do your work easier and you get to get quality results. So keep learning and keep staying on top. Thank you for sticking and staying with us. Have a wonderful time. Bye.